and welcome to the Meg Method Podcast, the podcast that aims to help you move, think, and feel better so you can do more of what you love with the people you love. And I know there are so many of you out there loving the world major marathon. So today we'll be giving you a Berlin Marathon top up episode for this year to complement episode 100 of the podcast, which was our huge episode on the Berlin Marathon. So do go check that out also. Um, But before we get going to do a quick intro to who we are, I am Meg Walker, an endurance athlete and also a fitness and health coach who helps coach others through similar endurance endeavors. And today I am delighted to be joined by David Yim, a six star marathon finisher. He's going for the double. He's the modern day Mr. Motivator who has his own ever growing Facebook group. I think it's the most popular Facebook group on the internet with all his incredible running advice. Um, And how many times have you run Berlin now, Yimmy? I've run twice, Meg, and this is my third go for the 50th edition. I can't wait love it um so yeah hopefully and i've run it once so hopefully between us we can share our fountain of knowledge with you today so you can feel great about your own race that's what it's about creating your own memories so definitely go check out episode 100 where we share in detail our memories but this episode is all about giving you a quick top up of info we want it to be short informative and impactful so you can get the most out of your race so we're going to get straight into it now, this year's race is a big deal, isn't it, Yimmy? It's the big 50th year. And it's my big 50th year exactly. as well. Exactly. Do you want to so give I, us um, yeah. a little update on that quickly? <laughs> yeah, I mean, 50th year for me. Um, decided to do a really big challenge. Uh, as you know, I did the seven marathons in seven months challenge last year. And one of our our, our mutual friends reminded me that there were 12 months in a year. Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know what, this year, in my 50th year, why don't I do 12 marathons in 12 months, including all six majors, all for Young Lives versus Cancer, which is the charity that you and I both support, um, raise as much money and awareness as we as we can. And um, and just have a load of fun in the process. Exactly. Absolutely love it. So if you see Yimmy around the course, give him a big toot for his 50 and um, enjoy the 50th year itself. What an honour to run such a big race. So this year it takes place on Sunday, September 29th. I've got a couple of clients running it and the excitement is really starting to build. Are you feeling excited, Yimmy? Oh, you know what? Four and a bit weeks to go. Mm -hmm. And I am getting really excited. I remember being having a load of FOMO last year when when we were recording episode 100 with all of the details and going through all of it, all of the the, the experiences. And and I can't wait to get back there. I wish my training block was going a bit better. If I'm being honest, uh, not had the easiest training block, and I've got a bit of an injury which I'm managing with some medical assistance as well. So. Um, whatever it is, at the end of the day, I'll, I'll get out there and uh, I'll get the job done um, and, you know, reset my goals and be realistic about what I can achieve on the day. But I'm super excited to I'm, be doing this race. I'm excited for you. You've been such a trooper. You've been smashing all of these marathons, all for an amazing cause, Young Lives versus Cancer. I know you'll have a smile on your face on the day and no matter how you're feeling you'll be hyping up everybody else so uh definitely give yimmy a 50th birthday shout along the course he's definitely going to give you some encouragement (laughs) back and i really appreciate you being honest as well because that's what happens sometimes we do these endurance events and some things are out of side of your control but there's also so much inside of your control and i know you'll do what you can to still enjoy the day so going into the info for the race for this year as i say we go into lots of detail in the other episode about our experiences today we really want to give you a top up so you know what you're doing this year Um, an important note you can adjust your best time in your user account your online account um, under my registrations up until the 22nd of september now somewhere on the website also says the 23rd so i would just go with the 22nd Mm -hmm. to be on the safe side and yim and i have noticed there's a few discrepancies um so we've gone on the caution of safety with this episode so if you listen to this um you've got the info that you need after that it is too late as your race bib will then um, need to be prepared ready for the expo on the day you can go um 
slower you could go into a later pen you can't go forward in the start so that's what you need yeah. to adjust if you want to go forward you can't do that after the 22nd of september so the expo that's in flughaven tempelhof isn't it yimmy it is it's the second largest building as i mentioned on the big episode second largest building by footprint in europe so huge place it's an impressive place as well tempelhof the older airport and it is vast prepare to do a lot of walking that day exactly so wear comfy shoes if you're coming straight from the airport you can have like hand luggage size but nothing bigger than that so just be aware of that yeah. um, and it is one of the sightseeing stops for berlin so you're getting that right off off the bat uh dates and times from thursday september to 26th um you can visit the expo um and you can do that on friday and saturday as well so it's up till 8 p.m uh, so 10 a.m to 8 p.m thursday and friday saturday it's 9 a.m till 7 p.m so a little early Earlier. don't let that catch you out because you will not be yeah. able to get your bib on the day um bag drop is same as the last year so again lots of details in episode 100 um you can't nominate anyone to pick up your bib for this one which is a bit of a no. mix, that isn't it for the uh, majors do you know what i think london is actually the only one where you mm -hmm. can actually nominate someone to go and pick up your bib for you um and i, I wish the others would do that because it, it, it kind of is a bit of a rush for people to get from the airport, get there, particularly if they're only arriving on the Saturday. Um, however, I would say that, you know, closing at 7 p.m. is better than the 5.30 p.m. for the London Marathon. So that's a bonus on the Saturday. There is no pickup, bib pickup on the day like all the other majors, of course. My advice is always if you can get there on the Thursday evening or Friday evening, I've been there. Uh, on the two occasions once on the thursday evening once on the friday evening and you know towards the end it's really quiet and then i've gone back on the saturday to have a proper mooch around when when friends have arrived and we've gone to explore the 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 expo together but definitely if you can get your bib on the you know in the evening it closes at eight o'clock on thursday and friday it saves you doing lots of queuing up and standing around um you know waiting in long queues for for that pickup the one thing i would say uh, on the pip on the actual bib itself like london berlin live prints the bib now so you know you can go to any desk you walk in and surprise surprise it looks like a, an airport check-in desk yeah. because <laughs> yes, it's an airport. In, um <laughs> you were in an airport um it's in the last hall there are three there's like an outside area and then you walk in and there's three large halls the the last hall is where you go to pick up your bibs they make you walk through all of the merchandise which you know i love meg and i'm <laughs> loving the color of this year's merch as well <laughs> it falls for it every time <laughs> you go to that you go there you take your start card which you'll have had emailed to you with your id you present that they live print your bib my laps chip stuck to the bib this year yeah so, so excited mm, about this it's always on. been on your um a chip on your shoe and you have to remember to give it back at the end oh. that's been you me and i you're here on episode 100 that's our biggest bane from the berlin marathon and you don't have to do that anymore they have got with the <laughs> no, time thank, and it's on the bib thank goodness um uh, i would say it's the biggest bib of all of the majors so it's mm -hmm. quite wide and quite okay. tall as well so just make sure you've got it pinned on properly and you know I, I i say that because my first year of running this i caught my watch strap caught the bib and it tore the corner off yeah. so just be prepared because it's quite a chunky bib you'll get your bib there's another desk which you then go to to pick up any pre-paid and pre-ordered merchandise so your event shirt will typically go in there as well um and then you may need to pick up another bib as well, which I will then we'll talk about a bit later on in terms of the um, pre pre marathon festivities. Uh, yeah. But that's what that's the big big, big pickup. Very very efficient, as you would imagine, and then lots to explore in the expo itself. Exactly. So quick reminder again, for the pickup, you need official identification card. So that's ID, passport, driver's license, your start card, you'll get seven to 10 days before the end by email. And you can also download it in your user account. So yeah. um, two options to get that. Um, you should also uh, receive, do you get, you do get a kit bag with that as well, don't you, Yimmy? Yes, uh, you do get your kit bag. It's quite a large bag, which you can then 
attach your your number to the front of and then you take that with you to the start line to the athletes village where you can drop it off the other thing that the other top tip that we mentioned in episode 100 is as you walk in you get your wristband yeah <laughs> and yeah, do not take this wristband off. It's, it's becoming a bit frayed now the, yeah. the 2020 too we on. took it a bit too it's... seriously he's uh, he's never taken them off in three years <laughs> <laughs> I you, know, you, know. To you mate you can take it off now <laughs> you know you know what I'm, I, there's a guy i saw he's got like seven of them all the way up his arm he's gonna and... tell him well you know <laughs> some of you were saying oh maybe it's time to take them off now but you know what's going to really annoy me this year meg is mm-hmm. i ran it in 21 i ran it in 22 mm-hmm. i didn't run it last oh, year it i'm gonna run it in 24 what am i gonna do i know i mean what am i what am i gonna do i've got have to get Sharpie now. out ask them to give you two <laughs> <laughs> but seriously do not take this wristband off yep. until after you've completed the race you will need this this is your security identification to get into the start line village you can't get into the start line village without it so make sure you keep that on until you finish the race 100 percent. also on your bib you will have additional services um on the bib where you gently tear it off the relevant part for what you need again very gently you don't want to be ripping your bib uh, do you want to give us a little update on the event tea you mean Oh, the event tea is available now. You can actually go on the Adidas website and, and look at it. There are, as in previous years, I think Berlin was, was the f- one of the first ones to do this, where they actually have an event tea and a finisher tea. Mm-hmm. And I suspect they've also got a 50-year special tea special, as well. Special T-shirt for the 50th. You, you can order any of that stuff, the event shirt and the finished shirt, um, online and actually have it before you go. Or you can pre-order it using your account dashboard on the BMW Berlin Marathon website and on the SEC website, I should say. Um, and you will be able to just pick that up at the at the expo. The jacket is also available. I know people love jackets as well. Oh, I love the jacket. Beautiful yeah, blue. Got the major jacket. Do you know what? It's, you know, the, this year's one's very, very nice. I think it's actually uh, got a hood as well. Mm-hmm. So, I'm yeah, looking already. forward to... Um, to getting my merch on the on, on the day yeah you'll see him absolutely caked in it the merch magpie you'll be like who's that guy he's got every single item in the store i think he's wearing five t-shirts at once um, <laughs> <laughs> i love it but um as we wind up the expo as i say all we go in lots more depth in episode 100 today mm. really is a top-up of the um this year's info did you want to give us a quick top-up of what you're saying about almost having an extra bib this year Yes, so there's traditionally there's been a pre-marathon uh, shakeout run. Yeah. It's called the Friendship Run. It used to go to the um, the the Olympic Stadium. That was free, but that has now gone. So there's no longer a free Friendship Shakeout Run, and instead it's oh, been replaced by the. <laughs> oh well, you know what? It's, it's trying something new, and and maybe this is maybe being a bit sort of you know, skeptical about this, but you know, the majors are doing this now. Boston has one, Chicago has one when you get your free beanie. Um, and you know, New York also has one as well. So Berlin has introduced the Generali 5k and it's still, um, time to enter and register for that. Again, you can do it through your dashboard. It's, um, on the Saturday morning and it is basically running the last 5k of the Berlin Marathon course from Potsdamer Platz all the way to the finish line. It is cool. It's kind of spoiler. It's kind of cool, but maybe yeah, you're right. Maybe yeah, it's, it's a quite, bit of a I don't spoiler. know. I think that's a cool, but yeah, like you said, is 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 a bit of a spoiler too because you 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 want you want maybe want to save that for the big day. Yeah, I mean Boston, you run the five. The, there's a five k shakeout run. And you actually run through the finish line and you finish somewhere else. Um, but this one for, 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 for Berlin is actually going to finish on the finish line. So it's €34.50 Euros 50 to register. Um, you pick up your bib. Um, at, as I understand, it, it's new this year. So I think you pick up your bib in the same way as you do for the, the, the Boston one and the, and the Chicago races. You, you pick up your bib at the Expo at the same time and then you can run on that saturday 
yeah so have a look at that and then also worth looking and definitely facebook groups there's usually some sort of individual uh runs going on as well with different yeah. sponsors and organizers doing that too so if you don't want to have a pre-marathon spoiler um check out the other options too so let's talk about the start line so the start line is located between uh, strasser 17 which is between the brandenburg gate and kleiner stern now they advise not to drive there's no parking um they are also big on their eco for this race as well so they really do ask you to please come by public transport or by foot um and also so this year from september 26 to september the 29th your bib number is valid for public transportation but that's zones yeah. a b and c make sure you've got that right because they are quite harsh in germany about the rules on the train you don't want to end up with a hefty fine but from 26 to 29th it's valid on zones a b and c um the bib number must be carried with you you can't do that without it so the nearest stops uh subway you've got friedrichstrasse which is 12 minutes walk from the start you've got potsdamer platz which is eight minutes uh walk you've got the s-bahn um hortbahnhof um you've got Potsdamer Platz and again uh, Friedrichstrasse and then you've also got the regional trains there um, yeah Hotbahnhof again and also Potsdamer Platz so basically the same three um, and they're roughly the same you, you're talking about between 8 to 15 minutes um, and you will get further information by ma mail in mid-September I I was always I mean the, the, the couple of times I've run it the first time I, I went to Potsdamer and walked up, it's it weaves around. You end up walking up to Parisier Platz and then turn left and you walk around the Brandenburg Gate to get to the start line village. If you go to Hauptbahnhof, which is the main station, it is literally a seven minute walk. I timed it from the front of the from the front of the station. You walk up to the Reichstag and you turn right and you are right there in front of security. It's so, so close. And like you say, if you you know stay near an S-Bahn or a U-Bahn, it's just so easy to get there. So um, definitely, definitely dictate public transport. Um, Starline Village is massive. It sprawls all around. There's usually a massive screen. If you're looking to meet people there, then... You know there is a big screen as I, as I mentioned on the full episode the the bag drop situation it's not a logical it's not always a logical flow of bib number so you actually have to you look at your bib number check out the station where you need to drop your bag off but it doesn't always go in sequence exactly so you've yeah. just got to get there early just to navigate around there you don't want to be rushing around trying to drop your bag but the good news is that you know, because it's a loop race, you'll come back exactly to that village at the end and you'll know exactly where you've dropped your bag off. So, yeah, which is super yeah. helpful or always help like major points when a major marathon does that it just makes it things a lot, lot easier. Yeah. Um, so the start and fi finish area is accessible um, only for participants with your bib number and the athlete's wristband. So again, don't forget the bib number and your wristband shouldn't have come off your arm from the expo anyway. And um, the area will be open from 7am. Um, and like I said, it's just for athletes. So you will need to leave your friends and relatives behind. And unfortunately, the doggies and the bicycles as well in terms of start times uh 8 50 will be the hand biker elite 857 wheelchair competitors 857 also hand bikers and then from 9 15 a.m runners will be leaving in four waves again we go into detail about the waves in episode 100 so we won't take up time doing that today uh the time limit is six hours 15 after passing the time measure mat again that's quite fair and kind of them not all majors do that and it just makes it easier because that time starts when you start your race so don't worry if you're further back it's fair in terms of starting there um you have a cutoff point at kilometer 33 at 3 50 p.m and a cutoff point at kilometer 38 at 4 35 p.m um, and if you've not reached one of these points by that time you do have to leave the course and you either continue on the sidewalk or you ride in what they call the broom wagon which actually sounds quite fun. <laughs> Sweep, sweeper bus. Yeah, the basically. sweeper bus essentially. But we have no doubt that you have a fun race. It's yeah. flat and fast. Yeah. And it really does work in your favour. Um, so yeah, like we said just, before. Yeah, go, go Yumi. Yeah. I think just as a reminder, two things about the start line. One is get to the corrals early. Yeah. Because you walk through a little bit of the tear garden. It's like a wooded area where 
I mentioned last time, there are some urinals just before you actually get to the entrance to the to to the Strasse 17 Juni. Um, the uh, the marshals are ve- will, will check your bibs to make sure that you've got the right letter, and they're quite they're quite strict about you getting into the right pen, and the pens do fill up very very quickly. Right. So if you're looking for a fast time and you want to be at the front of your corral or your your wave or your block, then make sure you go there early because you know they will fill up, and of course the second reason is because the start you do not want to miss that start line Mega. warm up it's one big party oh which is as we said last time it is the best start line warm up of any of the majors and in it and it truly truly is the the atmosphere is electric sorry new york marathon i know you love your your new york new york singing out with old blue eyes but you know nothing beats the the the, the that whole dancing thing the whole clapping thing if you know you, you know, know. <laughs> so we have that to look forward to this year and the camaraderie is fantastic so definitely get yeah. there early um and again like i said be honest with your race start time it just makes it a fairer race for everyone and also it's not if if, if you're a slower runner you don't want to feel overwhelmed and be stuck with the faster people um it's not nice for the faster people and they've been really uh, great berlin marathon by being fair and starting your time from when you cross the line so just be honest about your race number if it's your first marathon and you don't have a planned finish time you'll automatically be on the last block um um, and like I said, you can move back blocks, but from the 22nd, you won't be able to uh, update your um, best time, so you won't be able to move forward. Um, and like we said, look at uh, listen to episode 100 for more detail about the starting waves, but they are yeah. starting in blocks, um, and you'll be your um, starting block uh, allocation is on your race number, so you just yeah. have to look down and you have details there. Um, do you want to have a little mention about congestion at the first bit of the race, Yumi? Do you know, you and I had different experiences yeah. of this. I remember on the last episode where I think if you're in some of the earlier blocks, there's quite a rush and there's quite a bit of congestion. I was sort of in the mid pack towards the back, so I felt less of that, but. One thing I would say with any marathon is be patient at the yeah. start, right? Because you, when you walk down that avenue, you will realize that it, this thing is eight lanes wide. Yeah. It's eight car widths wide. So the start line is huge. And you run down the end. The first thing you get to is the, the victory column, which you you kind of, you all sort of like peel around it on two sides. It's amazing. And then it sort sort of starts to tighten up a little bit. And by the time you get to like three and a half, four K, there's a little right turn and you end up running down quite a narrow road and it does bunch up a little bit. So just be aware of that. Be patient, be considerate. Um, there's, there's, the, the road does widen up again. And the vast majority of this course is on what I would regard as very typical wide European avenues where, you know, there's just lots of space, you know, but if you're in one of those earlier corrals, it may well be that you, you experience more of that congestion at the start, but certainly nothing like you will have experienced in Tokyo, Meg. Yeah, 100%. 100%. <laughs> um, and adding on to what Yumi said, and we've both said this in a pre- pretty much every major marathon episode, I think, and with any marathon, um, we've said it in our own little ways, but essentially your pace, your race. So just make sure that you don't get too excited by the crowds when you, when you've got, especially with a big start line like Berlin, when yeah. they hype you up so much, there's eight <laughs> lanes, you're going to have a big surge. Just like uh, Yimmy said just keep to your keep to your pace don't feel rushed be patient and stick to your pace you don't want to go out too fast and that's a golden rule with any marathon yeah um quick one with hydration systems i'm not going to go into too much detail because the the dimensions are going to be are on the website so go have a look at that um but for 
Um, Berlin, they're very eco-friendly. They want to reduce waste. So for this race, it's very rare in a uh, major, but you can have a hydration bag or vest, um, max yeah. three liters. And then yeah. you can also have a drink belt as well. So go and look at the real details because, you know, there's things about the pockets, etc., on the website, but just know that. Um, there are changing tents and showers. Um, they're at the start and the finish. And there's also some sanitary facilities at each supply point. Um, Yumi mentioned it earlier. If you're a male, Again, unfortunately, you do get a bit lucky. There are some urinals right near the start. Um, but ladies, just be aware of that before you go in, um, that you take care of your toilet needs um, and do get there a bit earlier. Yeah, I think you mentioned the hydration systems there. The, yeah. the, two, the two races the, of the majors where you can use them is London and Berlin. Yeah. Berlin, I, I ran with a hydration vest in 2021. I ran with a belt in 2022. They are super generous at all of the water stations, all of the aid stations. They offer right at the end people holding jugs and they fill up either your your bladders on your on your backpacks or your bottles. I had my tailwind bottles last time when I ran this race. Super generous with that. They have these big jugs. As I said. It's very, very quick. Um, and there's toilets at the end of each one of the, the aid stations, of which there are 15 of them on the course starting from five kilometers the next one's 12 then 17.5 22 and a half 27 32.5 34.5 and 40 and then in addition you've got 9 15 20 25 30 and 36 that offer not only water but bananas apples uh morton's drink as well um i love this i mean all right. It was the first time I ran a marathon where they were giving out food. And I know and they have these bananas, which are like half peeled and you, you bite into a really crisp apple and you think, wow, I just really needed some some real food. Um, but then the other thing is, like London, they're very skinny on the on the gels that are available. I think yeah. the US races do it really well with the cis gels and they give them out more often. I think but probably here, also because of the sponsor, like it really is high quality with Morton gels. So maybe it's keeping costs down. I'm not too sure. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, Boston has Morton as a sponsor as well. And they gave them out at three or four places. There's only one gel station, which is 27 and a half kilometers and um, as Meg and I have said on previous episodes, you know, we always advise take your own. Yep. Nothing new on race day. Take your own. Twenty seven point five is like a little booster, which you will, which you you can you can have if you um, run out of nutrition, as it were. But it's it's way too late in the race to be taking your one gel um, if, if you're if you're relying on on it being supplied by the course. But they are giving up Morton's drinks in various places more often than the Lucas Aid's been given out in London anyway. Exactly. And same with refreshments. If you see refreshments written on the course that you're not used to, again, either you still have a bit of time to practice with them, um, but I'd always advise bringing your own just in case and having that extra supply. Um, you can wear headphones for the race, but they do strongly advise against it. It's, uh, this is basically the same for all world majors. Like the world majors, a huge atmosphere, especially Berlin with that start line, etc. So the race organizers are always going to try and think about your safety. They don't want you to distracted um, and they want you to enjoy the atmosphere so they won't stop you wearing them um, but they do advise against it do you know what slight aside here meg um when i ran copenhagen earlier this year just after london i ran copenhagen there was actually a medical emergency on the course where the police came driving up the course escorting an ambulance and it was a stark reminder. I didn't wear my, I was, wasn't wearing my headphones at the time. And you could, it was amazing to see how many runners had their headphones in and couldn't hear the emergency vehicles. And, and I remember running up to people and just tapping them on the shoulder and saying, go to run to the side, run to the side. And yeah, you really do need to have your wits about you. Thankfully, it's a rare thing when, when you get marshals, you know, giving out instructions or emergency vehicles on the course that was certainly the first time i've ever seen it but it's not totally you know unfeasible that you might have an, an emergency at some stage so you need to be able to hear you know the, the shocks headphones are quite good the the ones that don't go into your ear as it yeah. were so you can still hear about hear what's going on or at least turn down the um the the noise cancelling on your headphones if you can or or or, or have the, the volume turned down low 
exactly so no judgment if you do but it's, i advise i advise my yeah. clients the same in training wherever you are make sure you can hear the road it's just a safety thing uh, when i did the world record in the massive costume in london uh, we really struggled with that because especially near the end of the race people are getting tired they got headphones in and we're trying to shout for their safety like hey there's a big costume behind you and people just couldn't hear um, yeah. So yeah if you wear your headphones no judgment I sp I'm, I'm aware loads of people use it for training but same rules as we advise for your training um, keep the volume low make sure you can hear everything at all times yeah. and like Berlin say as well it's not just safety they want you to soak up the atmosphere it'd be shame to run um, over 42 kilometers um, and miss that atmosphere um, let's go so another thing uh, to remind you is that on the course you so the sponsors for Berlin is Adidas and they have the iconic uh, blue free stripes to uh, that's painted all across the course and basically if you were to follow um and stick to the stripes that's meant to be exactly um the course distance so some people do that just to, well the elites will be doing that just to shave off time um it doesn't yeah. matter too much if you're not following it and again um mm -hmm. with big crowds not always possible um but it's it is quite iconic for berlin the other ones are usually you know like a, a colored line um but the three stripes of adidas is quite fun to yeah see. Boston has it too. Adidas, Adidas or Adidas are the apparel sponsor for Berlin and for Boston, and they mark out the blue line, the racing line, as it were, with the three stripes. They have this video of it on that on the Friday night, or it's maybe the Thursday or the Friday night, where they're actually painting the stripes on the road, and it's quite cool. If you see, it, keep your eyes peeled on social media, and they they show the live painting of the of the racing line which again gets you all hyped up for the race. I think it's great. Yeah, I love it. I always love looking out for it. Um, and it's a nice touch um, for those races. Now, course elevation, it's a flat and fast course. It really is a kind one. You've got a max elevation gain of 79 meters and the max the elevation will go to is 60. Um, and then do you want to talk a little bit about race sightseeing? I think there's a nice balance with Berlin. It's certainly not the most in a major, but they do include what they can. Do you know what? The first year I ran it, I thought, gosh, this is this is not like, you know, I was spoiled with London, right? Mm -hmm. And you get to see all these major landmarks. But actually, having been on there, been out there on holiday with my family and learned more about Berlin and then ran, I ran the first 16 miles as part of a training run um, of the Berlin Marathon course um, in, the, in the summer of last year. And I thought, wow, I've learned so much about what's actually there. I mean, we talk about a lot of the details on the actual, um, on, the, on a big episode, but things like, you know, the Reichstag um, it, at sort of at the end of mile five, going into mile six, and you've got, you know, the, you run past the main rail station, you run over the, sp the spray, the river, um, and then you, you know, you run past the, the TV tower on three sides. I mean, I, God knows why I missed that in my first year. I thought, <laughs> I, can't, I can't remember seeing the, 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 the TV tower. And then the second time I ran it, I thought, uh, I actually, all I have to do is look <laughs> How did right. I miss that? How did I miss that? Exactly. You know, you do run through the, the sort of East Berlin part. You get it back in, into West Berlin. You come back in through the shopping district. You get to see the Kaiser Wilhelm Cathedral with the, with the broken tooth. You see it as a church with a broken steeple. Um, and there's the big shopping district that you actually run through. And that's when this crowd starts to build up. And then, you know, you into Potsdamer Platz, which is this really new area. It's all been redeveloped in the last, in the last 10 years. It's one of the um, areas they'll see coming off the train. It's one of the options for the start. Oh, absolutely. And it's also the start line of the, the 5K yeah. starts at Potsdamer Platz. And you know you've got a park. I always say to people, when you get to Potsdamer Platz, you know you've got a park run to go. Yeah. Um, you then run into this sort of, sort of Jewish district and it gets a little bit quiet and I always say it's like the, the calm before the storm Meg. you you <laughs> then weave into you see this this um these this market building which is beautiful it's got you'll know it because it's got two domes it really is and and, and and you'll you'll see that and you know then you've got three kilometers or just under two miles to go and then you know you've only got three turns left I would always say, look out when you see those two domes, 
Look out for the crane camera, which is always there on the right hand side. Put your arms up in the air and get a wicked photo of that behind you. Then you turn left, you run down the street and it quietens down. You turn right and you're into this little like small square. And then there's a sort of left turn, which you do. And before you realize it, you're into Parisia Platz. Yeah. And and the crowd starts to build <laughs> and it builds and it builds and you then see in the distance the Brandenburg Gate. Iconic. Now this is Absolutely where you're iconic. gonna listen to any piece of advice. We laugh about this every time, but it's so true. If, if you if you store in your brain one piece of advice from this episode, please let it be this. The Brandenburg Gate is not is not the <laughs> <laughs> we laugh because it gets it's got it's it's kind of got us before it gets other people however it is a huge photo opportunity so make sure yeah. you you get yourself uh, with a mega smile on your on your face have your arms up but just like yeah. it's a pretend celebration for the camera you've still got yeah. a little bit to go it's not quite the end but be, be glad you're almost there <laughs> there's 400 meters to go and i'll tell you what meg those 400 meters feel like the longest 400 yeah. meters in your entire life. You make you absolutely right. You know, I love nailing the race photos. I would always say you run through the arch, look to the right. I'd stay on the right because there's the crowd there as well. Yeah. There's always a photographer. They get this more, this awesome photo of you with the Brandenburg gate, this wide angle shot. I then usually run over to the side and I high five the crowd and okay. you then run past the Soviet War Memorial, which are two tanks parked up on the side there. You won't even notice them because you're no. so lazy focused on that <laughs> finish said. line. Almost but it seems said. to go away as, as you run towards it. And do remember, you know, when you as you get to about 100 metres out, you'll see the photographers in front of the gantry, have your arms up in the air, and you'll get this wonderful long shot with the Brandenburg Gate behind you. I'd say look around you because you don't want you look around who you you don't there's certain people you don't want in your finish line photo right and that's that I made that mistake time. in my iron man the guy behind me was like right well right in front of me and he was like the walking dead i've had to erase him out of my iron man photo <laughs> <laughs> oh dear me and then when you cross the finish line keep smiling and keep your arms up in the air because there are photographers after the finish line and you get to see the gantry behind you and and no sooner have you crossed that finish line, um, they're really, really quick with the, the medals are right yeah, there. Yeah, great. And you, you pick up your medal. If you've got the poncho option, there is the poncho. It it's just just to remind people, it is not a New York marathon poncho. No, that is the creme de la creme. It's not <laughs> the Tokyo the towel either. Um, but it, <laughs> it it's it's still a good piece of merch. If you're a magpie merch nurture like Yumi um it's a nice little thing to keep yeah yeah it is it is cool and then then walk around to the bag drop you get that uh, banana you get your little goodie bag at the end it's normally got a banana in there it's got a bottle of water and let's not forget you get your free um uh, Erdinger alcohol fray beer as well exactly <laughs> I mean I didn't even good. like beer <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't even drink beer. No, and, but he's not but going it's for it. So, but it's so refreshing. It really 100%, is really cool. 100%. Um, so you can also get your medal engra engraved afterwards. It's bookable with the registration. So that's noted on your bib number and you can make use of that service after the race. Or, or in addition, um, it, you can get it on the day. It'll cost 12 euros, um, but you can only pay by cash. And you can also download your certificate a little while after the race and print that out as well. There are massages in the finish area um, opposite the uh, Reichstausweiser. Um, and it is for free free um just be aware there might be a little bit of a cue for that and also it's it's it won't necessarily stop aching muscles the next day my advice would always be to try and be on your legs a bit the next day um just shake them out um that usually helps a bit of stiffness yeah, yeah. I, I i've i've never made it in time for yeah. the massage post-race to be honest with you meg i've always been disappointed the two times I've run it um but i would say you know and i say this I've said this to, you know, on my, on my Facebook group, as well as advice, 
when you finish and you've got your medal, before you do all your excite, get all excited with your selfies, etc., just spend five minutes stretching. And actually, that that is such a lifesaver. And as I agree with you, the next day, just keep moving, keep the legs moving. Uh, but stretching for five minutes after you finish the race. I know you're all elated and excited and stuff but it will just pay dividends it means that you actually start that recovery process as soon as you can exactly and just allows you to enjoy the last day or so of your holiday yeah. too um now i have to give it a special mention because it cracks jimmy and i up every time from starting at 25 kilometers and located every five kilometers you can also get a massage on the course now personally that baffles jimmy and i that's a big no for us <laughs> we'd worried we'd never be able to get back up again we'd lie down and <laughs> We'd be too loosey goosey and not able to start. <laughs> However, it... if you really think you need that, um, that is there. It, it blows my mind every time. Do you know what? It's it's it does make me laugh because there are two things marathon runners should never ever, you know, consider getting into um, at the end or even during a race. One is a deck chair, yeah. and the other the other is a camp bed, one of those canvas camp beds, and that's what they have. I think it's from twenty five kilometers onwards, isn't it? Where yeah. they they have these 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 massage stations, and I saw people lying in them, getting deep heat rubbed into their legs and being stretched out and stuff. And I just thought that is that would be like getting into a ball pen in a straight jacket, yeah. you know, <laughs> or a hammock. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, d- take your own risk up that one, on that one. Yeah, we'll say may the odds forever be in your favour. You might still yeah. be there until um, the 51st anniversary, but you know, <laughs> some people like a risk. Um, so that yeah. is all really for the race info. Um, like we said, your po- poncho and your bag drop-ups in the finish area, r- loads of signage, can't miss it. Um, showers at the finish line as well. Um, and again, really helpful that the start and finish at the same place. Um, so yeah. any quick Berlin sightseeing tips? One thing we were discussing before this episode is the food for Berlin. There's lots of good places, to be honest. There's no huge standouts like we've had in other episodes where we can both think of something straight off the bat. I, I would say most hotels do a pasta party. Most of the big hotel chains do pasta party. Um, certainly the pasta buffet the night before, you know, it's normally around 27, 28 euros and it's eat all you can sort of pasta buffet, which is, which is really convenient. You don't want to travel too far. But yeah, the food in Berlin is generally pretty good. Um, and if you get stuck, that whole... There's a new shopping centre in that Potsdamer Platz area where um, there's like cafes and just casual dining stuff. So you can get burgers, you can get pizzas, etc. cetera, um, all the way down there. So there's plenty to go, uh, plenty to choose from um, in, in that Potsdamer Platz area. Yeah, and every episode that we do, um, for the episode, there'll be a description of the episode. Anything, if we think later on of any standout places or any of the main things we've noted in here, um, we'll put that in the episode uh, yeah. description. So always check out the episode description for these episodes because we'll put any key highlights. So if you think of any, we'll put that there. Um, but in general for Berlin, lots of places to get burgers, pizza, pasta, etc. cetera. Um, from the coaching side of you, I always say be cautious leading up to it. Like, Yes, there is lots of all-you-can-eat buffets. Just careful not to, to overdo it. Last thing you want um, is to feel super bloated on the day. You should really be thinking about, like you win your race from the start of the week. You should be thinking about slowly increasing your hydration at the start of the week. You should be thinking about slowly increasing your carbs per meal. And then obviously you want to get um, be well hydrated the day before and you want to be um, having a good carby meal. But just don't put loads of pressure of yourself and be doing all your carbs the night before before so that's just me um being the coach in me just to advise you of that yeah and then yeah exactly so and really all we've got left to say is have the absolute best race it's flat it's fast the start line is an absolute hoot um and what an exciting time and privilege to be part of the 50th year i can't wait I, i i can't wait despite my my training woes meg um, I know there's a big group of us from Young Lives versus Cancer going out. I know there's yes. a big group from Sports Tours International going out as well. If I see you on the course, I'll come say hi. If you see me on the course, I'll be wearing my standard Young Lives versus Cancer top, my bright pink visor. Um, 
yeah, have fun out there. I'll be hyping. I'll be hyping everybody up around me. Yeah, and please do um, look after each other on the course. That uh, really does make the event even better. I think it's a really nice and friendly race. Um, it's a fr- it's a really nice on the body course. Um, certainly out of the majors, it's one of the um, kindest courses. Yeah. Um, like I said, not much elevation and stuff there. So the more you can look out for each other, the better the experience. Um, something I wish there was more of is more charity events for um, Berlin. I mean, it's been a long time now. I did my race back in 2018 and they're really i think i was probably one of only a few people with charity vests uh yimmy's bringing a bit of an army which is fantastic um so definitely give a hype to that so if you're doing it for charity extra kudos to you um why not do an amazing thing um and help other people raise awareness um you know totally. help charities as well so good on you um and yeah look after each other out there if you are running other major marathon episode uh, marathons this year then fear not we have covered every major marathon episode in huge detail we've done our experiences we've gone for everything you can think of i've done some post tokyo sightseeing stuff from this year yimmy's going to be going out um to do all of the rest of them this year as well so be sure to check the relevant episode for your race just find the meg method podcast subscribe and scroll down and the next top-up episode will be around late september more likely for chicago marathon followed by New York, and you will see Yimmy there as well. So he's going to be a friendly face at all of these. Amazing. Yeah. Anything going else for that. to add, Yimmy? No, that's off? it. I can't I can't wait to do these other episodes. And, yeah, let's, um, let's, let's, let's see how things turn out for that redemption run in New York City this year. I can't wait. I can't wait. So, yeah, um, the episode will be out very shortly. It'll be on all major podcast platforms. It will also be available on YouTube as well. And then in the episode notes, we'll make things easier. And I'll put the episode numbers and links for all of the other major episodes as well. But have the best race. And we will speak to you soon. Take care.